welcome back to our series on the history of India. In the last six videos, we talked about the prehistoric times in India and how they eventually led to the emergence of Meherkhan. But before we move on and see what happened next, we need to address some misconceptions that have severely distorted our understanding of Indian chronology. The thing is that most of what we know about India's history is based on colonial outlook which twisted facts to justify colonialism not just in India but across various colonies. But if we were to look at all these sources, archaeological, anthropological, literary and astronomical in balance, we get a different picture of what really happened. To explain what I mean, let's start with the archaeological sources. The Sindhu Saraswati civilization, also known as the Indus Valley civilization, is typically the one that we study from this period. And we are familiar with sites like Mohanjodaro, Harappa, Kali Bangan, Lothar, and so many others. But sites like Sinoli and Dwarka, which are also part of the same period, find no mention. This prevents us from linking them with our literary sources and forms an impression that the Sindhu Saraswati culture was completely isolated from the Vedic culture, which is not true. In fact, sites like Sinoli that were discovered by accident suggest that there may be many such sites throughout India, but they haven't been found yet because of continuous habitation, making digging difficult, and hot and humid climate that causes deterioration of evidence. Most of the sites associated with the Sindhu Saraswati civilization are located in drier and less populated areas of India which may explain their better preservation. Keep watching the space where we will talk about the evidence of cultural continuity between the Harappan and Vedic periods and the India of today. Also, there is a Saraswati river that played an important role in both Harappan and Vedic cultures. But again, it is hardly ever mentioned. Now when we look at the literary sources, we see that some of the earliest evidence comes from the seals and signboards found at different sites of the Harappan civilization. Also, during the beginning of our civilization, most of the ancestral knowledge was passed down orally and it wasn't until much later that it finally found a written form. And even when it did, it was updated regularly that led to a lot of intermixing of information. The literary sources include Ved, Puran, Mahabharat, Ramayan, Jain accounts and many others. Interestingly, India, being a pioneer in astronomy, also recorded astronomical data that is now being studied to corroborate with the literature and archaeology. Here's the catch. Our colonizers used the Bible to measure the accuracy of Indian historical accounts. They based the chronology on Christian timelines. Max Muller and many others repeatedly affirmed their full faith in the stories of Genesis and Bishop Usha who had concluded that the world was created on 23rd October 4004 BCE. Now remember that even the stories of Jesus or Buddha who are considered as historical figures have no continuity in their literature and are garbed in various myths as well. So the only reason for declaring some parts of our literature as myth was the long genealogical list of kings that did not fit into this timeline and of course the ideology. So, colonial historians selectively chose some dynasties as real like Shishunag and Mauryas while others as mythological like Ikshvaku and Kaurav with no arguments to support the selectivism. And even when these literary sources talk of kings, their kingdoms and wars, the colonial historians conveniently mention none of them to drive an image that the Vedic period was primitive and pastoral and contrasted with the urban Sindhu Saraswati civilization which contradicts with the truth. Even the later dynasties like Guptas, Cholas and Pandyas and many others continue to record their origin from these earlier kingdoms that were called mythical. This is not even the case just in India, but even other civilizations like that of Egypt and Mayan were also given the same treatment for the same colonial reasons. Now on one side we have the Sindhu Saraswati culture with enough archaeological remains but hardly few scripts and that too undeciphered. And on the other side we have Vedic civilization with large amounts of literary sources but fewer sites. The whole story only comes together when we realize that they do not exist in isolation but rather complement each other. And just like India of today, there are various subcultures form a part of a larger culture, the Harappan sites only formed a subculture during the Vedic times. In fact, the texts themselves are called Itihas and Purans, meaning relating to history. Yet we choose a western outlook over that of our own ancestors. 
So from the next video onwards, we will first talk about the history as derived from archaeological sources and then move to study history as mentioned in literary sources. Finally, we will add the two together and see how they complete the picture. This is likely to disrupt much of what you currently know. So stay tuned and let's continue this journey together.